We're back at Coronation Street talking to the big stars, and next I spoke to Patty Clare, who plays Mary on the soap, who of course has been bothering Norris Cole for a while, played by Malcolm Hebden. And I began by telling Malcolm he was my favourite character on the soap and a genius. <laughs> you say so. I don't think I'm absolutely knackered this afternoon, going around and smiling all the time. It's the most exhausting thing well, in my life. This is good because this is radio. You don't have to smile. Grimace at me. Do whatever you will, as long as you're entertaining. <laughs> I'll do what I can. <laughs> the pressure. Let me tell you about you two. I love it because I take little clips from Coronation Street and I play them on my radio show all the time and have conversations with you as if you were there. And there's one going around that I play all the time that my listeners keep requesting about your foo-foo. Oh, oh, you mean my Mew Mew? Oh, your Mew Mew? <laughs> yes, my Mew Mew. What is it? She, 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 what does she wear in bed? It's um, um, possibly a scrunchie and I lie there stroking my Mew Mew. <laughs> <laughs> You have got the best comic timing. I, I, this is what I love about Coronation Street. And to be honest, it is my favourite soap. There's no point denying it. The comic timing is brilliant. And you two have worked so perfectly together. Is it fun when you find that chemistry just works? It's very lucky. Uh, it doesn't work with everybody. And, I mean, we were total strangers. Yes. She'd never heard of me because she doesn't have a television. <laughs> uh, and I I'd, I'd, uh, worked a lot in Scotland. And so we were just very lucky. Yeah, it's, it's based on trust, actually. Probably misplaced, but <laughs> I'll end up with a knife in my back one of these days. No, it but is, it's trust and also um, theatre experience. I think if you do a lot of theatre plays, you kind of have, a, like Malcolm said earlier, a bit of a shorthand, you know, that you both recognise. And, and, and comedy is all about timing, <laughs> she says, stuttering. But, you know, it, it's, that, it's, it's, you know, it is a two-way street, so... We are very lucky. And yes. we all love this love affair between you that isn't happening on your part, but in your head it's there. Oh, it's so happening in Mary's head. <laughs> yes, yes it is. She, she has set her cap at, at um, Norris, so there we are. <laughs> may, may I ask, what's going on with Norris? Because he deserves a good woman. <laughs> Stony silent. I've got too on. many <laughs> women. I've got Rita, I've got Emily, and now I've got this dragon, and it's a nightmare. I just wish they'd leave me alone with my train set. You two are brilliant together. I've got to pick up on something you said earlier, though. You haven't got a telly. No. What do you do in the evening? Well, that's a very private question. Um, no, what happened was, I love telly. It's not because I, I disagree with it. I, it's like, it is like catnip. I will watch maybe eight, nine hours in one sitting. So I decided a few years back that I would see if I could live without. I'd, I'd gone away to do a job in Scarborough, and I decided when I came back, fresh start, no telly. And it was a big old box thing. It was like a boat. It was horrendous, really old telly. So I, I moved it downstairs at the flat <laughs> and then proceeded to fill my time but now what's happening is I'm just watching lots of DVDs on my computer and there's iPlayer and there's ITV iPlayer so I'm back to like probably five six hours in an evening <laughs> what do you do in the evening Malcolm <laughs> this is very personal uh, eat too much drink a bit not very much at all. And rehearse, presumably. That's what I love about you guys. You work so hard and they get their money's worth, don't they? Yeah, well, we rehearse a lot. I mean, there's no rehearsal on set. You simply go in and do it. But, f like, for this DVD and for the stuff we did in Bronte Country, Patty lives in London, I live up here, but you came and stayed and we do rehearse. And but you can over-rehearse, you know, because, I mean, I was talking about there, for the next script, there's one very short scene uh, and a very dramatic scene, important to Norris, but he could play it absolutely furious, but he could play it desperately sad. And it's nice to have that choice, but you don't know which one's going to be appropriate until you get the other people around you to see what's mm -hmm. happening. So you can't... I mean, it's fine if it's just the two of us, but if you're working in a group, you've got to leave something unrehearsed to see what comes across you know we're back with Norris and Mary from Coronation Street of course actors Malcolm Hebden and Patty Clare next I asked Patty about being an actor on a soap and the schedule that they have to relentlessly churn out these programs day after day after day and I asked her at what point did it become natural that she could just read off the page that's a very interesting point because I think it, it comes from I think from a theatre background because because that's just your training you know and also you know, different actors have different techniques or whatever, but I think we perhaps have a similar technique where it's very much what's often not said 
in between the words are often is often more interesting and that that's to do with listening and being really interested in the other character and we I think we naturally have that so we naturally listen and give space to each other so I think that's what uh, you yeah, mean I think if that's the way you've been brought up it, it is it's something you wouldn't do anything else mm. you've got to stay in that moment and I mean most of the theatre I've done 30 odd years of it was done in Scarborough which is entirely in the round like the Royal Exchange here in Manchester but it started there with uh, Stephen Joseph and there's nowhere to hide. If you're on a cross arch, you can g get away, whereas you've got people all the way around you and in touch in proximity and they sometimes do touch you. <laughs> uh, we won't go into that. Uh, but so you, it's concentration and once, uh, once you've learnt that, you wouldn't think of doing anything else. You would never switch off. Mm. Be also terribly rude to the it person. You, but I've worked with. I worked with somebody once uh, in the t final dress rehearsal, and uh, was looking over my shoulder. You know, so I turned around and said, it's, oh, and, and, and what, what was so interesting? <laughs> I said, "What?" I said, and I just came out of the play, frightened him to death. He never did it again. But you couldn't do that. It's so disrespectful mm. to the people you're working with. Are you glad that you're you and that you've got this character because they give you some corking lines? I mean, I always love it when you've got a nuts magazine in your hand because there's going to be a joke there somewhere, isn't it? <laughs> I often have nuts in my hand. Uh, they're very good for you, apparently. Uh, it's not true. Uh, if only. Uh, no, yeah, they do. I think in a way, when you first go into the street, and this is what Pat has done very successfully, is is they don't always know what they've got. They don't always know where they're going to go with the writing. So anybody new comes in, I say, try and be daring. Be positive. You may make the wrong decision and we'll never hear from you again, but you might just give the writers, uh-uh, I can do something with this. It's no good being negative in that show it's quite competitive mm -hmm. you know and you've got to make your mark you do which I've, I realise you know they they kind of fling you at the screen and then it's very much up to you what, what you do with it which is amazing in hindsight looking back on on the amount of space they do give you but I that I what Malcolm said is spot on because I absolutely remember my last two weeks that I thought that this is it so I thought you know what I'm just going to be brave and have fun and I had three little scenes I think in Emily's house and I, I'm sure because I just went for it and did something a bit daring I think that the, 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 the writers went oh I see and then they picked up on something and then it's mutated into this thing this creature. <laughs> this creature. I, 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 I retract yeah. everything I've said <laughs> uh, I have to live with you now and, and also I think when new characters come into the street it takes a while for the public to catch on to them mm. You've got to give them time. And oddly enough, sometimes very good people come in and it just doesn't work for them. You know, they do terrific work. And then it's they... a character soap, isn't it? And that's certainly what you've created. I mean, it's a fine line, though, isn't it, between you being lovely and you being a bunny boiler? Because yes. you're always kind of on that line, aren't yes, you? Yes, very much so, which I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I really don't know where it I comes from. You should get a television at <laughs> night. No, your imagination is running away with you. <laughs> and, and as for you getting the gig, of course, you, you literally stalked them until they said yes. Well, this was a long time ago <laughs> when I came out of drama school. Um, I, I really wanted to be in the show so I kept writing to the then casting director James Bain and they were one of the few casting departments that would reply to a, an actor, young actor which is really encouraging so of course I was encouraged So and then I thought I'll help them along, I'll write a scene so I wrote a scene and of course that was it absolutely not but I like to think it kind of made the cause for like whenever it was, well it would have been 17 years ago <laughs> and you know finally it's paid off, yes <laughs> It's not the advice you would give to somebody of my age. I haven't got 17 <laughs> years to wait for the job. Tell me about when you're going through your day and you hear a double entendre here and an innuendo there. Are you tempted to say to the writers, could you stick that in because you know how you're going to say it best and sometimes you've just got the corkers? Yeah, the, the double entendre and innuendos, uh, I mean, certain writers write more of them. But the thing is, Norris must never be aware of what he's saying, you know. I mean, if he's, you know, you're always going to have a look at the Nuts magazine, it, it could mean peanuts in his head. But he, he mustn't be aware of any of that. Otherwise, it's too vulgar and it's not right for the street. So you can only leave it to the audience to decide, you know, for them. 
Fortunately, I'm a very innocent, simple person that <laughs> comes naturally to me. Yeah. Very finally, before we go, your parts in this, I mean, I've seen the front cover of it, and what beautiful pictures these are on this, on this DVD. You look delicious, may I say? Thank you very much. I think I've been airbrushed. I really do, look. I can say I have been airbrushed. Yeah. Oh, no, they haven't. You I do have look like that. I have been airbrushed. That's you. With an airbrush effect. Do you mind being airbrushed? <laughs> Not the person I've been working with. Have you got a sister or something? Oh, no, it is. It's very well done, isn't it? It's really colourful. I hope people well, find it fun. Like that. Yeah. I mean, it's like a film. Yeah. A fun film for people to watch on Boxing Day. Yes. There's no smut, no nonsense. Just fun. I have loved this. Thank you so much for talking to me. Come on again. Patty Clare, uh, the new big star of the soap, and you've made it your own. Congratulations on that, because it's easy to be distracted by bigger personalities than yourself, isn't it? And you've managed to do that so beautifully. There's no chance of that. We were having a coffee. She's only been in the show two months. We were having a coffee on the street, because I smoke. And this woman came up to her and said, could I take your photograph? And she said, yes, and turned to me and said, you can be on it as well if you like. And I thought, hmm... I must talking of the smoking thing very finely a mate of mine just phoned me he said where are you going I said I'm going to Coronation Street to talk to Norris and he said oh yes he was at one of my courses to stop smoking he's failed do you want his number he says he'll do it for free to get you off the facts it worked no I stopped absolutely dead I know what you mean no I stopped for three months so why are you back on the fags again? Uh, it's complicated. Every, and it's, it's serious. There is a condition which, if I, about two months after stopping smoking, and I really truly can stop, it's not a tail, I get severe colitis. And apparently, if you smoke, you never get colitis. You must have had it before, but it, the smoking controls it. Would you like his number? He says he'll help you or do anything he can to help you if you need it, but if he's going to make you ill, it's not worth it. I've, I've recently stopped, didn't yeah, I, yeah. a few months ago, and I can. And this way, it was 10 days, and with that condition, I can't work. So I have to... Look, you're, look, you're looking at me it's very... True. It's, it's true. true. It's it really I shouldn't, true, I shouldn't yes. be... Fo- this isn't one of your little jokes. It's no, not no, a wind no, no. I wish it was, because I would love to stop. Yeah. Well, you must do, because we don't want to lose you. That's the thing. If you left this soap, I would switch off. I'm telling you now. Do you know, he's, he's fitter than me. He has lower cholesterol than me. You Really? I mean, I will... I'm, no, I'm going to not talk anymore. And I'm it. also <laughs> considerably older than you by 30-odd years. 27, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I'm not good at <laughs> you could be my daughter. Guys, thank you so much for talking to me. It's been a real pleasure. And uh, thank you for being you. And keep on keeping on. And I love you very much. Don't leave this programme, will you? Not if we can help it, but there's a big train crash coming up. It could oh, don't tell me that. I'm going to lose sleep tonight. Well, you'll just have to wait and see. We don't know yet. No. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you. And thanks to Thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.